Hello, good people. It's Jason Irvin, a.k.a. The Janitor, here bringing you another episode of Wash, Rinse, and Repeat. Now, today's Friday, February 1st, and every Friday I would like to bring to you some command line skills. Some weeks we'll be working with Windows PowerShell, and other weeks we'll be working with the Linux Terminal. Today is a Linux Terminal Day, and I would like to give you my top 10 Linux Terminal commands that I believe they will be helpful for you today, tomorrow, and in the future. So without any further ado, let's cue the intro and get right into that terminal. As you can see, we're back in our favorite place, the terminal. And the first command that I want to go over with you is the PWD command. PWD stands for Print Working Directory. And if we type that here, we can see the exact directory location that we are currently in. We're in the root home slash janitor directory. There's nothing really special about it. This just allows us to see what directory we're currently in and where we are in the file system. The next command is the ls command. ls stands for list or to list all the files in the directory that you specify for it. We type ls and there's nothing here. So as far as we're concerned, there's nothing in this directory that we can see. Now there is an option with the ls command that is used a lot and that's the dash a option. The dash a option will show us different files that can be hidden within a directory and those files can be indicated by the period in front of them. So when you see the period in front of a file, that signifies that it is a hidden file and it cannot be displayed unless we add the ls-a or list all command. Another option that we can add with that dash a command is the letter l. So if we do a ls-a L, the dash A says list everything, all files, even the hidden ones, and the L gives us a long listing of those files to include the permissions and the owner, the group, as well as the date that the file was created. The next thing we're going to get into is creating directories. The mkdir command is what we're going to use here. So we're going to create a directory named Sonic. So we type mkdir or make directory space sonic, the folder that we want to create or the directory that we want to create. Now when you type ls, you can see that the sonic directory is now available and visible. Now with the mkdir command, we can specify exactly where we want the folder to be. So it doesn't have to be in the same directory that we're in. We just need to specify where we want it. So in this case, let's do a test for mkdir um, make directory into the temp folder. So forward slash tmp forward slash sonic. Now the error that just came up states that we already have a folder in that directory named sonic. Let's just check to make sure that it does exist. So typing our previous command of ls or listing everything that's in the forward slash temp directory, we can see that the sonic folder is there. It's something I've created a little earlier. Now if we have to create multiple directories, we do not have to create them one by one. With the make dir command, we can just type out the names of the folders that we want to create and it will create them all in one line. So here we're going to type mkdir make directory for the folders tails, knuckles, and robotnik. How do we check to make sure that those folders are there? You guessed it, that ls command is going to allow us to see that all of our directories that we wanted to create are actually in that folder. As a little bonus, let's do a ls-al and look at the dates of our newly created files. Now that we've created our directory, the cd or change directory command will allow us to get into the directories we've just created. So let's type cd or change directory into sonic. Now that we're into this directory, let's type pwd again to print the working directory and you can now see that we're in our newly created folder under home, janitor, 
Sonic. Now there are multiple ways to get to directories. Since we're in the Sonic directory, we know that the Tails directory is actually one folder up under the folder name Tails. So if we type CD dot dot, that's to move us one directory up forward slash tails and then type pwd you can see that we have now moved from the sonic directory to the tails directory if we want to move to the knuckles directory using the full path name of home janitor knuckles we simply type cd uh, forward slash home forward slash janitor forward slash knuckles so we could have went up a directory to do that but instead we are doing the complete path for that directory for the knuckles directory so far we've printed a working directory we've listed the commands with options we've made a directory we've changed into those directories now we want to create combine and display different files the next command is the cat command or to concatenate and it does all three of those things. It can create a file, it can display a file, and it can combine files. So let's create our first file by typing cat, the greater than symbol, and the name of the file. In this case, we're gonna call it hello world. So we have cat greater than hello world. Once we type enter here, the terminal will allow us to input what we want to be inside of the file. In this case, we're just gonna type hello world. To get back to your command prompt, hold down the control key and press the letter D. Let's create one more file called I'm here. You see how to do it. Cat greater than I'm here. And within that file, we're going to type I'm here. Hit control D and we're back at that terminal line. As easily as we created those files, let's display what we just typed into them. So just type cat, hello world. That's concatenate the file we just created called hello world. And it displays what we typed in there. We can also confirm that with uh, the I'm here file by typing cat, I'm here. And you'll also see what we just typed in there. By typing ls, we can see the two files that we just created right there in our, in our directory structure. Remember we also said that the cat command can combine two files into one file. And let's do that now by typing cat hello world, which is our first file, and I'm here, which is our second file. And then using the greater than symbol to create a new file called hello world, I'm here. Hit enter. And if we cat the hello world, I'm here file, we can see that both of our text that we inputted into the previous files are now into this one file called hello world I'm here now cat isn't the only way that we can display the text that are in files we can also use another command called more so right here let's just go ahead and type more hello world I'm here and we should get the exact display as we got with the cat command one question you may be asking is Jay why would I even use the more command over the cat command? Don't they do the same thing? Well, actually not. The more command becomes more helpful when you have files that are longer than one page long, as it will pause the screen to allow you to read all of the information that's on screen before you continue. The cat command will just scroll through everything. So let's go here to a file that I know is more than one page and type more Etsy shadow and let's see what happens here as you can see more than one page is displayed the more command freezes the display so we can read what's on the screen if we hit the enter key we can progress by one line if we press the space bar key we can progress page by page so we can see everything that's in the file an even better way to read files is to use the less command. If we use the less command on a short file, like we are about to do here, by typing less hello world, we will notice that it takes us into an entirely different screen. 
where in order to get out of this, we need to actually press the Q button. The less command becomes even more helpful when we go to, again, a larger file that has pages of information. So let's type less Etsy shadow once again, and it will look pretty much like the more command, but you'll notice that you have a few more uh, keys that you can press to go up and down on the screen. Just like the more command, you can hit the inner key to go line by line, the space bar key to go page by page, and the up and down arrow keys to bring yourself up and down within the file. That is the real power of the less command. Our next command is the move command, or MV. To demonstrate this MV command, let's go ahead and move this file, hello world, up one directory. So we type MV for move, the file, hello world, and we're gonna move it up one directory by typing dot dot forward slash. Now, the move command will take the file from its original location and move it to wherever you say you want it to be. As a matter of fact, let's move all of our files we just created into our home directory by typing MV, the file name, again, we've, we've done hello world. Let's do I'm underscore here and hello world, I'm here. Let's move all of those into the janitor home folder. Now you can see that when we do a listing of our folder now, there's nothing there because we've actually moved those files from one place to the other. By moving up one directory, typing CD dot dot, that's moving us up one directory, CD dot dot forward slash, and doing a print working directory, PWD, we can see that we're back in the home janitor folder. Now, let's go ahead and display everything that's here in this folder now, which would include the things we just moved into it. So typing LS, we can see that all of our files are here. So let's do a couple more things. Let's move that hello world I'm here file into the knuckles directory by typing MV hello world underscore I'm here space knuckles. That's moving that file hello world I'm here into the knuckles directory. And we can also with the move command move a file and rename it. So let's type MV I'm underscore here space tails forward slash now I'm here. So what this is telling us is we're going to move the file name I'm here into the into the folder or directory tails and rename it now I'm here. Now we can confirm that our move and rename has successfully been completed by typing cd change directory into tails and listing the files ls and we can see now i'm here the file name we just placed in there renamed let's move back into our home directory by typing cd dot dot to move up one directory forward slash and do a ls we can see that the files that we've moved are no longer in our home directory they're in their respective places where we placed them. Now there's one file left here. We have the hello world file. And what we want to do now is introduce another command, the copy command, CP. CP is different than move because it allows us to keep a copy of the file where we have it and to place a copy of that file in a different location. So let's copy that hello world file into the directory sonic by typing cp hello underscore world space sonic and just as with the move command we can copy things and give them a new name in their destination so let's copy cp the hello world file into sonic and rename it with the forward slash copy underscore hello underscore world going into the sonic directory by typing cd or change directory sonic and listing everything that's in that folder we can see we have the two files we've just created the hello world and also the copy of the hello world 
we're almost at the end here. So we've now moved files, copied files, created files. Now it's time to start removing and deleting files. Let's move back to our home directory. How you do that? We're gonna CD or change directories. Up one dot dot forward slash. So now where are we at? We're in the janitor's directory. Let's type ls and display all the files that are here. Let's confirm that we're actually in the janitor home directory. How we do that? PWD, print working directory. And now you can see we're in the home janitor folder. Now, we want to remove, which is our new command, we want to remove the hello world file. So we type rm hello world. So rm for remove the file hello world. Now the rm command will remove files, but what about those directories we just created? If we want to remove those directories, we need to use the rm dir command or remove directory command. In this case, let's remove the Robotnik directory. So we need to type rmdir, remove directory, and the directory name we want to get rid of, Robotnik. So rmdir, Robotnik. Hit enter, and now that, that folder is gone. Let's confirm that both the file and the directory are gone by typing ls and listing everything that's in the directory. Now let's attempt deleting a directory that has files in it. We know that we've placed files within the Knuckles directory, so let's use the same command, the rmdir remove directory on the directory Knuckles. So rmdir Knuckles. And we get an error here saying that the directory is not empty. In order to force that directory to be removed with the files inside of it, we type rm remove dash R for recursive and F for force. So we're gonna remove recursively as long as there's things underneath the directory and force it so it doesn't ask us any questions. The directory knuckles. Hit enter. Now if we type LS, we can see that we have two directories left, the Sonic and the Tails directory. We can also remove both of those directories at the same time by typing rm, again, dash rf, and the two directory names, Sonic and Tails. If we type ls here, we can see that all the directories are gone. There are only three more commands, so stick with me. The next command that we're going over is the history command. So let's type history, hit enter, and it will display all of the commands that we've done so far. Now one of the cool things about the history command is the ability to recall commands. So if we scroll up here, we can see that number 10, the number 10 command that we did is that MKDIR and we created Tails, Knuckles, and Robotnik. We can type the exclamation sign and the number 10, it will recreate the command that we had in history. If we type ls, we can see that our three folders are back. Now we have number 61 here that shows us we can remove the Knuckles folder, and 63 that shows us that we can remove the Sonic and Tails folder. Do another quick ls, and you can see the only folder that's left is the Robotnik folder. One more advanced way to recall commands that we've done previously is by holding the control key and pressing the letter R. That gives us a reverse search. So control key and press the letter R and start to type MKDIR. We can see that it tries to autofill for us. So in this, in this example, we have MKDIR and it shows that Tails, Knuckles, and Robotnik was the last command that we typed to make a directory. You can see here that it worked. However, since the Robotnik folder, it already exists, it didn't recreate it. It simply just created our tails and knuckles folder. Typing ls confirms that all of our folders are there. Using our reverse search, let's get rid of all of our folders once again. And by listing everything that's in our directory, we can see that there is nothing here. We have an empty directory besides the hidden files. 
Sometimes we need to clean up that history file or we just may not want somebody to see what we've done on the system. In order to do that, let's type history space dash C. So if you type history space dash C, that will then clear up all of our history of things that we've done on the system. When we type enter, it says history file deleted, reload the session to see its effects. And what that means is let's just open up a new terminal. And if we type history in this terminal, you will see that there's only one command that exists. The command to clean up everything just off of our current working screen is the clear command. Sometimes you may have just loads of things on the screen that makes it hard to view what's going on or what you're doing and you just need to have a clean slate. So typing clear will clear everything that you're working on on the current screen. This doesn't clear the history, it just clears the terminal. Okay, we've made it to the end, finally. That was 10 with a bonus, I counted as a zero. So zero through 10, which gave you 11 commands that are very helpful, things that you will use all the time while working in the Linux um, terminal. Now, the last command that I'm giving you here is the man command. Man means simply manual. I gave you some commands, I gave you some options, but by no means did I give you a all or fully exhaustive um, list of options that you can use with each command. So, your homework for this week is to look through all of those commands we just did in the man page and try to find out different options that may be helpful to you, that may make things display a little differently and maybe to your liking. Just play around with it. That's what Linux is. It's just finding things that work for you or things that are helpful for you in that moment or for that specific situation or scenario. Again, this is Jason Irvin, AKA The Janitor, and I would like to thank you for watching another episode of Wash, Rinse, and Repeat. Always remember, stay focused, never quit.